Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. This is a very special video. I got to interview one of my idol, Joel Grimes. Now, if you don't know who Joel Grimes is, he is the master of the three-age lighting portrait. He has done so many dramatic portraits that I love so much. Composites or in studio or working with flash. He even reinvented his style recently with a famous plateau photography. This interview is really how to be successful as a photographer. This was a huge inspiration for me 10 years ago. It changed my life. I hope this interview will change yours. Joel, thank you for meeting me. Serge, excellent. This has been, uh, this is really a blessing for me. I, just to give a little backtrack on, on my relationship with you, I, uh, I, I found about you about 11 years ago, I think, uh, when you came into the Kelby, you know, empire. And uh, I think you, you did something with Scott. And, um, and you've changed my life in so many ways. One, by inspiration, by wanting to teach. I, I love the way you teach and it really inspired me to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, uh, I, one of the main reasons I'm st living here in, Lo in Los Angeles is because I got an O-1 visa. And that, that visa, you only get if you get press. And the only way I got published in press was through this video you did years and years ago, I think seven or eight years ago, where you explained your marketing plan. But I want to backtrack things first. Um, when did you start into photography? Well, so I, I took a, uh, as a freshman in high school, so I'm like 14 years old. They gave you and six- you're like 40 today, so that's like- uh, uh, no, <laughs> no, I wish. Um, you get six electives. Uh, welding, uh, drafting, uh, printmaking, uh, wood shop, Mm, I, I can't remember. Anyways, photography was one of them. And so you, I'm doing, and I love working with my hands. And I'm not very good at uh, a student academically. So, uh, you know, but if I work with my hands or drawing or whatever, I'm, I, I love that, right? And I always was drawing it as a little kid, drawing, you know. Um, but when I took photography, it was kind of like a combination of, of artistic but technical. And, you know, you go out in the field, you, you know, I have assignments. And I went nuts. I thought, this is the greatest thing. So then I took the next year, the full year, and then the full second, uh, like second tier. And then the fourth year, I was the teacher's assistant. So I ended up taking it basically almost four, four years in high school. But still, I never thought, make a living with photography? That never even crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was in sports and everything. And so, um, you know, I, I, and I didn't know what I was going to do. But my dad was a fireman. Um, and so in my, in my brain, I thought, well, maybe, um, you know, be a fireman or something. But, um, then I took a class at Pima Community College first. So that's the, a community college is a one step sort of before you go to the university level. Right. And, um, it's not very expensive. It's not like it's, you know, it's in local Tucson community college. Well, little did I know that one of the best probably teachers in the world happened to run the pro program at Pima Community College, Lou Bernal. And as 19 years old, I go in his class and he gets up there and he says, photography is a great way to document the world around you with a camera, but there's something better. That is to have the camera be a tool to be an artist mm -hmm. and create. And I'm like this going, <laughs> wow, I want to be an artist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so now it's hard to understand, but that's planting a seed, right? That now, that's, that was 40 years ago, and it's still there. It's crazy. And, and still I have a passion greater than I probably did back then, right? But I couldn't get enough. And then I went to the Arizona State University uh, in the fine arts, finished up at University of Arizona with a bachelor's degree in the fine arts, which has really no preparation for the real world, right? Right. So then I had to learn, I wanted to, I wanted to chase my dream. I had to learn how to do that. And um, I was in a shock. The real world is brutal. And it was, it was almost like, and, and my dad said- yeah, Especially fine arts, so you wanted just like 20 years old, get into fine art right away. Well, so I, at the time, you understand that definitions, I didn't know, like I didn't know an art director, ad agency, creative directors. I didn't know graphic design. Graphic design, I had graphic design friends, but I didn't know what they did. Hmm. 
I didn't know they, they do the typeface. And I mean, you know, I didn't understand all that, right? It's right. just a world you don't know. And so uh, I knew there was newspaper photographers. I knew their National Geographic photographer. I didn't know that was under the umbrella of editorial. See, I didn't know those terms. Um, like corporate... Uh, corporate direct, like you, Hewlett Packard has a plant down there and they have a big headquarters. You go and you knock on their door and there's a marketing department inside. Right. I didn't know that. Um, consumer direct, that was like weddings, uh, family portraits, senior high school portraits, all that. I didn't know that. I knew that existed a little bit, but I didn't know what, you know, how that was all separated. Mm. And then, um, um, but I had a studio mate who went to Art Center in Pasadena, mm -hmm. which is one of the most prestigious art uh, photography programs out there. Um, but he was unique in a way that he was really a marketing genius. And he understood how to get his, your foot in the door. And he was brilliant at it. So here I am, shy as can be. I mean, I couldn't, I, if I picked the phone up to call someone like I didn't know, shaking. Wow. That's, I mean, I was so nervous. And if, in, if anyone has done that, your tongue feels like 50 pounds. Like that, 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 that. You know, I'm Joel Grimes. I mean, I couldn't say it. Wow. And so I had to learn from that point to get to where I could be proficient at making a cold call to someone new uh, to exert myself in the marketplace. I had to learn how to do that. But so how did you, because one of the thing, one of the questions I get asked a lot, and I guess you asked too, is, okay, I'm passionate about photography. How can I turn this into a living? Like, you know, I, I, like for example, I find it's hard to make money with fashion photography. Maybe you start with real estate or maybe you do some wedding and then you get in fa So how did you get your first uh, money? Well, so, so you have to, put, uh, in some way you have to put your stake in the ground in something, right? right? Um, and when I started, I did a lot of things. I did architecture, you know, then I started doing ad stuff, um, corporate direct stuff. I did annual reports. I went to 50 countries around the world, some of them 20 times. Really? Um, so, um, but I had to go and figure out what do I want to do, right? Mm. And that's the most important thing is where do you want to end up? So I always say make a game plan. Make a year game plan. Make a, say, a two, three-year game plan. Make a five-year, ten-year game plan. Absolutely. And um, uh, you don't have to always, like, if you start out in architecture, you don't have to stay there the rest of your life. Um, but, um, but more importantly that, let's say, you know, you and I, let's say, no, I, I met you and you said, Joel, you... Uh, I want to I want to pay you for one hour, and I say ten thousand dollars for for one on one. Let's just say, I wish I could get ten thousand for one hour. <laughs> but let's just say, right. would I talk about f stop shutter speeds technique? Yeah. No, I would tell you how to exert yourself marketing to get yourself in the door of where you want to go. Right. So. That's where the weak link is in photographers. It's not the skill set. There are amazing photographers out there. There are photographers that I look at their work and I go, these guys, they're better than me. Hmm. But why aren't they out there working, right? Because they haven't learned the marketing yeah, side. 100%. And so when I, when I do a workshop or when I do a lecture, um, for example, we're at Photoshop World here. Okay. And I've been doing this about five, six years. I can't remember now. Seven years. I don't know. Um, so you have a business track. Mm -hmm. You have a Photoshop track. You have a photography type track. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they break it down. So if I do a, uh, a class on lighting, and back in, and when there was like 800 seats in the room, lighting, packed out. Marketing, half full. Really? So why is that? Yeah, because people just they want don't. to think about the art, not about the, That's right. what it takes to get out there. Yeah. So I always tell the people that show up, you have an edge above the rest of the people mm -hmm. that are here at Photoshop World because you have made an effort to understand marketing. Once you understand marketing, you can go anywhere you want in the world. Mm -hmm. Now I say this without a shadow of a doubt, that if your goal is to be a, a, a say, contract photographer for National Geographic, it's a hundred percent guarantee you can do it. Oh, I agree. Now, there's a price to pay for it. Meaning, you got to go hone your craft. You got to be a storyteller. Mm. So you got to come up with a good idea, and then, or a set of good ideas, and then you have to hit that person, whoever makes the decision that says we want to send you to Africa and do some story. Mm. You got to hit them at least eight times. Mm -hmm. I call it the power of eight. The power of eight. Because that, that's, that's the one thing that changed my life. The yeah, power of eight. Because here's the problem. 
is human beings are the, we're the same. You and I, we're, we're all the same in one way. Is that if I run into you and I say, you know, I'm the world's greatest photographer and you hire photography, and then I walk away, you forget who I am. Mm. And then when an assignment comes up, you don't remember who I am. Mm. But if I hit you eight times, my name gets into your brain, and then when that assignment comes up, uh, I need a photographer, I need a photographer. And here's the, here's the most, most incredible secret on the planet, okay? There's two ways that you could say, unless my dad was the owner of National Geographic, that's one way. But let's say there's really two ways that you can get into uh, be hired by a company or an editorial magazine or whatever is one is you're the most incredible photography on the planet and your name is out there and everyone knows you and they go, let's get, you know, this guy or gal. The other name, the other way is, is through a crisis, okay? Now, since I'm not the best photographer in the world, my best hope to get hired by anybody in the advertising arena or whatever mm. uh, is that I get my name in their brain and then they have a crisis. There are three photographers, five photographers, whatever, are all booked. And now they need, their boss is saying, we need a photographer to do this job mm. next week or whatever, and they're in a crisis. And who are they gonna call? The first name that pops into their brain. Because I've done my homework, I've done my due diligence, I've now got my name in their brain. And, and I, on that, can you t tell the story in the whole, this whole scene where you every Monday, that's the story I heard years ago that inspired me, uh, I'll tell my version of it, but. Uh, where you were sending five, I remember, five, five or eight photos uh, every Monday to uh, uh, well, so the magazine I, you want to work with. Something. What was yeah, so I would, I would put together a little promo packet, like okay. I, somewhere handmade, wire bound or whatever, very delicate. I'd make like a couple hundred, right? I'd sit and watch TV and make them. Hmm. And then I'd, I'd uh, get my list, and then I would send it out. But several times. Oh, yeah, no. And then I'd make a phone call. Right. And i say, Usually voicemail. Hey, Joel. Or back then it was a recording machine, right? Hi, right. right, Joel Grimes here. I just sent you a packet. Uh, I'd love to talk to you in person. Click. So then I go, packet one, phone call two, because now they've seen Joel Grimes, Joel Grimes twice. Right. Then I send another packet, phone call. Another packet, phone call. So I called Power of Eight. So I make four wow. with four phone calls. Now, if that doesn't work, then I would take a uh, little, uh, uh, back then it was a, uh, little printers right there were 13 by 19 little post posters and i'd put them on foam core and it would be that sticky stuff you peel off and you put them on you smooth it up trim them up put them in a little acetate sleeve put my car in the back and i'd put them in my volkswagen van and i'd stack like 15 of them in there and i'd drive around downtown denver and i go xyz agency run in hand it to them and i'd do that and that i is just so cool. i kept getting and and so i had a list of uh 49 names or 50 names on my, on my computer, and I would keep doing it, just track, 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 track. And Denver is not like New York. No, no. <laughs> and I, in two years, I worked for 48 of those companies. I remember that story. Yeah. Is that not incredible? Yeah, it's, it's so incredible. It's all because, not, I'm the best, not because I'm the best photographer, because I'm the one out knocking and pounding the streets. Yeah, and I, I honestly think you, your style is amazing. I, so just for the story, I heard this story, which you just said, I, on a Friday afternoon, on a Sunday, uh, it was a Sunday. It was pouring rain. I didn't know what to do. I went into. Um, I live in um, in uh, in the suburbs of Paris, and I'm a. It's a little hill where I live. It's it's actually there's a forest and there's one kiosk that has magazines. I walked into that kiosk. I said, "What photography magazines do you have?" They had five. I bought all five. Went back home. I printed. I did my own kits. The whole thing took me three hours. I got 16 page published. Wow. From and I just sent it once. So maybe I got lucky. Yeah. Later down the line, three years after, when I had to do my O-1 visa to come to the U.S., it is these articles that got me the, the, the visa. Okay. So without you, I wouldn't even be living in the United States, which was my dream. Well, I'll send you a check. Me. I'll send you, you know, or maybe not a, a bill. A bill, a bill. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you a check. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's amazing. Now, how did you invent the three, the edgy look with the three lights? Because well, that's how I, yes. I found out about you about nine, yes. ten years ago. Yes. Okay, so... So the funny thing about, about um, I think, this idea of being a creative right. force, okay, is that we think you have to be uh, uh, brilliant or some special 
you know, powers that were given to you, you know, when you were born, that you, you know, everything you touched turns to gold. Mm. Well, that's not the case. Uh, maybe in some, it may be one out of a billion people are like that, you know, but most of us everyday people, we're just, we're, we're out there going, oh, what do I do, you know? Right. And so um, I was a one light cross light guy. So he have a big window right now. Mm. That's a big cross light, right? right? And that's really gorgeous lighting. I use that for everything. Um, and I had never put a light above my camera. So like a beauty dish or something. Right. Well, back when I started out, there was no such thing as a beauty dish. But, but I never did that. All cross light with a fill card maybe on the side. And I still teach that lighting, but that was it for 25 plus years. Wow. And so you remember back in the 2006, 7, and 8 in America, the economy went bad. Right. And I, at that time, was making 90% of all my income was off of ad agencies. Right. And ad agencies were closing their doors. The budgets were being cut, everything. And so um, I was caught in a little bit because I put all my eggs in one basket at agencies. And, and so um, I remember my income went down really low. And I kind of thought, okay, I, I, I got I to gotta reinvent myself. Hmm. Because I knew by then, I've already reinvented myself twice. Pretty much twice completely. Hmm. And I said, okay, I need to reinvent myself. So I sat down, I said uh, to my wife, I said, I'm 50 years old uh, at the time. I said, I'm not done yet. I'm going to rock the world. And she's, you know, <laughs> ironing or whatever. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And so, so I go, okay. So we, were, we just happened to go to the Gap. And we're buying clothes for the kids. And the guy that check, was checking us out it was this black guy, good looking, shaved head and I'm looking I'm sitting there I said hey uh, I'm a photographer I'd like to do a test shoot of you he's like huh I said <laughs> yeah are you model no 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 he said you know kind of smiled I said no oh, you'd be a good subject so I gave him my information and he called me back and so um, at the time I didn't have a studio uh, uh, but we had a, a beautiful Santa Fe style house with a big great room and so I'd push the couches out and I'd have this nine foot sweep and I could shoot in there all the time and so I'm sitting there going, I had this beauty dish. And, and um, I had photographed um, at one point the boxers that went to Athens mm. for the Olympics. And I remember um, using cross light. And I had seen somewhere where someone did a, um, like a little edge light on somebody. Like, right. like, you know, it's like a hair light. Right. And I went, that's kind of interesting. So I, di I, I ended up just, uh, one of the boxers... I tried that. I was like, that's pretty cool. And then I just dropped it. Never did it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time I ever used two lights on one portrait. So one edge and one... That was it. Yeah. Okay. And so then, so the, he comes in and I had this beauty dish I ordered, Paul C. Buff. It was like 80 bucks. I tried it. <coughs> I was like, eh. I was one of my kids. Eh, terrible. So I didn't know what to do with it because I never put a light over the top of my camera. So when Timmy, Timmy, Timothy walks in. And I go, okay, I'm going to try something completely different. Mm. So I get the beauty dish and I put it right over the camera. And again, I'd never done this before. And I'm sitting there going, I'll get an edge light. So I go over, dig out through, and I had these two little, little soft boxes or one. And I go and I put one and I, it's digital, right? So mm. small little digital. It's like that little teeny. And I shoot one. I go, okay, that's not bad. I go over and I do the other one. And I go, oh. Down power this, up power that. You know, anyways, so I started doing this and I'm looking at the back of the monitor going, I really like this. And so I shoot my series and then he leaves and I go to my wife, Amy. I said, I think I got something. <laughs> and she kind of looks at me and I go, no, no, honey. I think I got something. And so I, I retouched it, put it out. I mean, you know, got it out there and I started calling every, I mean, everyone I knew. The high school kids with football jerseys, everyone. I started going and just shooting the same light. And after about um, a year, well, I'll tell you this story. This is really funny. I was, I had my assistant and he said, um, I was showing him stuff, you know, look at this new stuff I'm doing. He goes, wow. He goes, you should put this on Flickr. Well, I didn't know what <laughs> Flickr was. I mean, I, you know, you hear it, hear it. It's like, it's like that beginning of, of this, you know. It was number six on you, not eight. Yet. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay. I thought like you put your family pictures, your, your cat, 
mm. your dog, you know, pictures. He goes, no, 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 photographers are putting stuff, and you put it like in a pool of like, you know, black and white landscapes, you know, you know, uh, sports pictures or whatever. And so he helped me set it up because I didn't know. So I get account, and I started putting these edgy portraits in there. And people are like, whoa, man, amazing, you rock, whatever. I'm like, whoa. And I never, by that time, I didn't have Facebook or anything. But um, I'm like, this is getting some good traction, right? right? Well, and I wasn't speaking it, you know, I wasn't a speaker educator at the time. So I'm, I'm sitting there, and, and I'd look at the comments, and, and you, know, you rock everything, and this guy says, not another three-edge sport, you know, uh, uh, edgy light portrait. When are you going to move on? And I remember reading that comment, and this is a year into my practicing this technique. Right. It felt like someone hit me with a knife in the heart. Because I was like, he's right. I've been doing this a year. And a little voice said, don't stop. And I typed back, I'll move on when I feel like it. <laughs> and that tells us a lot about our humanity, which is we don't like to be criticized, right? Or when someone tells us yeah. we're doing something wrong, it's like a knife into the heart. Yeah, 100%. And, and I say this because had I listened to that one voice, I wouldn't be sitting right here. I wouldn't be at Photoshop World. I wouldn't be a, a teacher because... I, I did not stop, and I got that look got better and better and more refined. And next thing I knew, I started shooting ad campaigns with it. And uh, my wife and I, after about five years, six years of, of that look going out there, I was teaching it, uh, preaching it to every corner of the planet. We're driving down Wil Wilshire Boulevard in L.A., and I look up, three-edge light uh, ad campaign, three-edge light, every single billboard <laughs> was three-edgy light approach. Not that I was the only, you know, I mean. No, but you. But I put it out there. You put it out there, definitely. But, but so I, what I say is, is that it's not the smartest people on the planet that end up rocking the world. It's the people that do something more than 99.9% .9 of all people on the planet that rock the world. And so, so that's why I have confidence in not my talent or raw, t whatever you call it. I, my confidence is in my ability to go repeat it over and over and over again. And now I know that if someone comes along and stabs me in the heart with a comment, I just go, eh, don't even think about it. 100%. It's not going to affect me. That's so cool. And when did you get the idea or how did you start teaching? Because he's such a good teacher. So this guy calls me up. I'm in Tucson, Arizona at the time, and he was in Phoenix. And he says, hey, I, I've been looking at your stuff, and um, would you... Uh, sit down with me and kind of show me what you do? And I'm like, sure. I didn't know who he was. Hmm. Well, he, he was uh, on the board of uh, an Arizona uh, PPA. Right. Professional Photographers Association. Which I bought up. And I didn't know what PPA was. Hmm. I heard the term. I knew what ASMP was because that was more of the advertising, you know, people hang on. And so he drives down and I sit there and, and again, didn't know who, I didn't know he was part of the board, whatever. Hmm. And I just, an hour or two, I just showed him everything. And he said, thank you very much, and left. And then two weeks later, he calls up. Um, he says, hey, uh, we're having our big Oktoberfest, and we have about 100 photographers come in. We would like you to be the speaker. I went, what? <laughs> and I, I, did, I said, well, uh, how, how are you getting me in? He goes, oh, I'm on the board. I go, oh, I didn't know that. Well, so at that event, there was another person that was on a board of another PPA, whatever. Mm -hmm. I went and spoke at that one, and then it just... You were telling me you do something like 40 dates a year or something. About 45 events a year is what I is average, yeah. And you're such... I remember uh, seeing a video years ago from you. Well, first, the edgy light. I bought all your tutorials, and it so inspired me. But also, I never really understood the Ron Brown look. I've studied so many books about you know lighting, and I remember you explaining, you're just moving that light and how it affects the face, and yeah. it was so well explained. Uh, that is so cool. Now, do you, because I get that a lot, did you get like photographers saying like, why do you reveal your secrets? You know, uh, we worked hard to learn this knowledge and what's your thought on that? Well, so in the 90s, well, I started on the 80s, middle, middle 80s, but, um, and so we didn't have like, you have, today you have YouTube and you have all this information in front of you. You'd go to the, li the library or say a, a bookstore and you'd say a book on portrait lighting and you go, and it still did not give you the secrets. Mm. Now, it sounds weird, but it was like you'd have a schematic 
which is a picture of an umbrella on a light stand with a guy, a little stick figure, backdrop, and whatever, and it just say umbrella. Well, does it tell you, you know, the information you need? And you didn't have the picture. You're like, I like the picture, but, and then you go out and you try it and it didn't work, right? And I was so frustrated in trying to learn lighting. Um, and so I'd ask the photographer, oh, because we'd be at the lab. I'd say, uh, I really like that picture. You know, what modifier did you use? They just look at you like, what? Mm, mom's the word. They wouldn't even tell you. Yeah. So it was secrecy all the way across, like the, the secret sauce. You know, the Coca-Cola secret right. sauce, you're yeah. not giving it away. Right. And so it was really, really difficult to learn photography. Um, and so then as I started getting better, I always had an open door of my studio. And people come in and say, oh, hey, Joel, how'd you do this? Come here, let me show you. I never thought twice, right? Mm. And I think part of it is because uh, my personality, but it's because I relish in other people's success. I quite agree. And, and that makes a good teacher. Mm. And so by the time I got to where I was teaching, I had photographer friends call me up and say, why are you giving all this stuff away? Mm. And I go, why not? What's the threat? They go, well, what if they go and you're competing against them at an ad agency for the same job? I go, the world's too big. It won't <laughs> happen. And so I've never thought twice about sharing every, every secret I have. That is so cool. Yeah, and uh, that makes you probably... Agree. And you're the same way. And, and I think when, when you hear you speak and talk uh, to photographers, you know, I think that's why you're successful, is that when someone's listening to you, they get a sense that you are interested in their success. Oh, yeah. I, nothing blows my mind more than to get you know, an email from somebody who says, you know, seven years ago I watched one of the YouTube videos and now I have this yep. you know, job, blah, blah, blah. I get that up quite a lot and I know you do get that a lot yeah. and I mean it's you know being able to uh, uh, you said something also uh, about um, you know uh, in France we have a lot of culture if somebody wants to be an actor or a director it's kind of looked you know a, a weird like people will say yeah come on you know stop dreaming and you know go get a job I hear that a lot what's your thought on that well so I was told even by most of my professors well my dad said son look he put his arm around me he loved me. He'd say, you can't make any money in photography. As a photographer, you can't make any money, son. And he didn't say that just once. He said it like a hundred times. <laughs> and I was living in a warehouse in Denver with no heat, sleeping on the floor with a sleeping bag. That's, that, and they'd come visit. My mom and dad would come visit and go, what are you doing, son? And they wanted to protect me from the hardships of this dream that I had to be a photographer. I say that um, in my, I got three boys in L.A., trying to be filmmakers, okay? And you know how hard that is, okay? Yes. You have to go through the steps of being beat down, no money for rent, no money to eat, mm. uh, you know, get kicked in the gut a few times. You have to go through that. And what happens is 90% of all people immediately quit. Right. There's a few people that keep going. They don't give up on their dream. And that is the key to um, anyone in success in the business is that they don't give up. Talk to, you know, you hear Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. you know, um, uh, Denzel Washington. He gives us, you know, two cents. What is it? Don't give up. Mm. Don't give up on your dream. Mm. And so um, when someone comes along and says, you can't make any, you can't, that's, mm. that, be an actor in Hollywood, that, that's, the odds are against you. And, and it's true. Sure. But it's possible. Wonderful. Because immediately 90% of the people will quit. So yeah, I really believe the, the most important thing is hard work. As you say, it's, um, it's how you say it, it's a self-liquidation process, whatever right. you call it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and you see it right away when somebody has the, uh, you know what I think it is? I think it's the interest. It's the passion. Because if you really like it, you will have the energy to go through these rough times. I, uh, a story I often tell, it's a true story, I almost lost my house. Because I was a very successful, I was a VP sales of a big company, and I was proposed shared into the company, and I gave that up to do photography, and and I almost lost my house in the process, but then eventually turned around. So uh, you know, it's as you said, it, it's. Uh, but the, I think the message is, that if you really want to do it, you can. Now you also said something years ago that really struck me hard. I don't know if you remember this. Is uh, the importance of self assignment. Yes. So um, you got to think about something. When I was studying photography and then I went and got in the, 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 the real world and I had, to, I had to go and 
build some images of architecture work to go knock on doors. So I had to go out and shoot, 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 shoot. And then all of a sudden you start getting work and everything. And pretty soon you wait for the phone to ring. Because in your mind you think, I've, I've done my due diligence and now, you know, I'm waiting for the phone. And so I, I remember talking to photographers going, how many, self, these are people that are somewhat established, right? Mm. How many self-assignments you do a year? What? They look at me. <laughs> self-assignments? Unless I get paid, I'm not picking my camera. And, not, <laughs> and that's no joke. They would really? say that. That's crazy. And then I would talk to some, they'd say, oh, maybe 10, 10, 10 a year, one a month, something like that. And so, um, and I was doing maybe, at the time, I would still maybe do 10 to 25 a, a, a year, you know, self-assignments mm. a year. Um, and I've always done that. But when I, at 50 years old, when I reinvented myself, I made a commitment to make, I said, I'm going to do 50 self-assignments a year. Yeah, one a week. Yep. And that's, I got to pay for a model sometimes, sometimes free trade outs, mm. but sometimes I pay for a makeup artist or I get, you know, a, a location I have to get. So there's a little bit of money involved. Mm. Not, oh, you don't want to put too much money out because you're broke, right? But you have to have, make a commitment, mm. time and a little bit of money, right? Um, we don't have to pay for film anymore. Mm like the old days, but you still have an investment. There's an investment. It's so funny because right when I heard you saying that, I was, I'd been doing interior design photography for five years. I love interior design, but it's not my thing. It's not, you know, my thing is shooting Paris. So I, I was shooting Paris for myself on the side. Today, I have not done any interior design photography for many years. What I make more of my money on is all of the photos from Paris That's right. and New York. And all this self assignment became my main line of work. That's right. And I remember when you said I was like, that's so right. So now what happens is two things happen when I go and do a self assignment. One is I grow, right? I yeah. get an idea, I look at something, I try something new. Which puts me at the forefront of the trend making process, right? Mm -hmm. Someone says, how can you be a trendsetter? You gotta be doing 50 self assignments a year. That's right. You can't be a trend center and sit and watch other people grow. Mm. You'd be left behind. Then you build a body of work that you love. So a uh, commercial work that I get hired for mm, sometimes ends up in my portfolio. Mm -hmm. But you know what? My portfolio is weighted 80% self assignments, 10 wow. or 20% commercial Same. work. So now I'm building my portfolio with gorgeous images that I love, that I have built, that's current to the marketplace. Mm. Guess what? <laughs> Your career will just skyrocket. Because you're at the forefront of everything. I was talking to you about platography. Yeah, and that's, that's because I'm constantly trying something new, a new idea, all these things. So you have to do 50 self assignments a year to stay current, to be a trendsetter. So I ask, I ask maybe 100, 200 photographers in my a, a year or two of walking around, teaching, whatever. How many self-assignments you do a year? Mm, zero, okay. So I plotted it out and I found out, I have it written down on one of my slides, but um, there were only 1% of the people I talked to that did 50 self-assignments a year, 1%. Wow. Now I guess who they were? Lindsay Adler, um, Sue Bryce. Everyone, you, <laughs> everyone that's on stage <laughs> that's, of influencer in the marketplace are doing at least 50 self assignments a year. Yeah, I mean, that means they have interest, they have passion, that's what they want to do. Yeah, and, you, know. you can't do it with 10, 10, 10 uh, assignments a year. One a month is not enough. One a week is what you have to do. That so is. you might miss a week. Yeah. And then I, I stack it up the next week. 100%. Yeah. I probably do more than 50. I know. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm saying. I'm, I'm constantly shooting all the but time. But that's what, so, so, so I've had people come to me and go, I wish I could be a teacher at Photoshop World. And I go, how many self-assignments are you doing a year? And they go, huh? I go, you'll never be, hmm. or a can't explore light. I want to be a can't explore light. And I ask them, yeah, how many self-assignments are you doing a year? Hmm? And they go, you'll never make it. Because you can't, only the people that are working every free minute of their time to build their portfolio, their, their style, whatever, end up on stage or end up really making a good living with photography. That's awesome, that's awesome. And so, one last thing, you said you invent yourself, so tell me more, a little more about this plateau photography, however you call it. Well, plate, so, plate, 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 plateography. Plate so, um, my, my assistant uh, uh, and I were building out our academy and I had to come up with a name, so we just kind of threw that out. But basic, cool basically what it is, is that we, we um, 
And I started doing composites and I got lots of grief when I started out. Like I was not a true photographer because I was putting pieces together, right? <laughs> but um, You're taking this to a whole new level. That's well, <laughs> so, so I did that for 10 years or so. And um, um, I started trying to solve problems, right? And so we have Photoshop is a tool, a camera is a tool. So I'm an artist now with a set of tools. Right. I used to say I was a photographer. Now I'm an artist with a set, set of, of tools, tools. And which happens to be a mm -hmm. photographer. But um, so I look at uh, as Photoshop as part of the process. It's a blending of the two things, you know, in the field shooting and then later. So now what I'm doing is I'm solving a lot of problems in camera. I say in camera. Shooting and then m shooting multiple plates or frames of uh, exposures and then later putting that together in Photoshop with masking and whatever. So it's not, it's kind of like a, a composite, only I'm shooting all the elements in the field. Right. So there's no cutting out the hair and everything like that. So it's actually easier. It's in a, way. Oh, in a way, it's to me, I got, when I say this, I have done more cutouts uh, than probably most people on the planet. Oh, right. I, I told, I'm willing to and do that. And I kind of got to the point where I got a little tired of it, hmm. you know, and I still do a few here and there, but it's like, so. Now what I do is I shoot a picture of you, let's say. Mm. I got my light over there, cast an edge light, and I'm doing a wide angle lens, say. So I can see my light there, I can see my light there, maybe I'm doing it, I can see my, my, my beauty dish over the top. It's all in there, but I go and I walk down on a tripod, I fire a bunch of, I get enough to where you get a good expression. And I go, you're out. Mm. Then I go and I say, okay, my second subject, they're sitting over in that chair over there. Then I take all the lights, put them over there, and I set them up and I shoot them just in that corner over there. And the camera didn't move. For the camera didn't move. And then I go and I shoot multiple elements. Then, and then I take everybody out and, take and I shoot the background plate. Mm. Then I put them all together in Photoshop and I, with mask, I paint you in, I paint them in, paint them in. And you can do this with just about anything. Um, That's awesome. And so it's, I, tonight I'm gonna be talking about that at Photoshop World and it, I say it's the future of where photography is going. Meaning that if you don't get on board with this technique, then you're gonna be left behind because I can solve just about any problem. For example, let's say I got a beautiful shot and I'm getting this great light and everything and all of a sudden the UPS truck pulls up and he's gonna deliver something across the street and it's like right in my shot. I'm going, oh my gosh, the sunset's perfect. Hmm. And I'm waiting for the truck to move. No. Click, 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 do all my stuff. Then he moves out, click. Then I have that frame. I just go and I paint that truck right out of the scene. That's awesome. So with people, anything. Yeah, plus everybody's perfectly led. It's great. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's and amazing. I'm at the beginning of where, so five years from now, nobody's going to be shooting pictures without this concept. I totally agree. Joel, it's amazing to, thank you so much. Serge, it is good. Now, one thing I want to add, I have, but lots of tutorials from you years ago. I know now you have a webinar, which I'm going to put the link right below the video, which, uh, what is this webinar? Well, so uh, once again, if you hang around, me, if we go on a trip, you and I are taken off to uh, Zion to do a picture mm. or a, a photo series. The whole time we're talking, I bet you we're going to be probably talking about how to break into the marketplace, how to market, all those things. Those are the things that I talk about. Um, when we get on the shooting, I may go, hey, Serge, what are you doing? And you say, hey, I'm, I'm uh, standing on my left leg and I'm, you know, I'm shaking the camera for some technique. Right. But we talk techniques, yes. But really, if you hang out with me, it's about me trying to get you to chase your dream and live your dream. Right. So that's what the webinar is. I introduced this, um, uh, you know, this, you can do it. Hmm. It's possible. Yes. And then I have built out 40 hours of training now. And it used to be that one hour of training cost you $100. Yeah, I remember. That's what you paid. <laughs> I, I, I bought three or four. I bought all of them. It was $99 each, I remember. Now you get one hour for like, what, a dollar or yeah. something? It's, it's like, crazy. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you should check it out. Yeah, I think you have the Joel Grime Complete Pack, yeah. which I 100% recommend you. This man's changed my life over and over and over. This is probably the best tutorials you can by in terms of portrait and marketing and everything uh, but watch the webinar and get the package all the links are below the video thank you so much again joel very cool and uh i will see you at photoshop world good <laughs>